I'm Elizabeth from Rocky Creek Valley Farm, and we're over here with Shauna at Red Shed Soap Company. And uh, we are in the final stages of making the soap. So Shauna's going to show okay, you how to do that. First of all, with the oxides, it's important that you have a nice um, all-natural oil. And right now I'm using the olive oil. And also it's handy because my recipe calls for super fat, which means at the end of your batch, after it's went to trace, you pour in another batch of fresh oil and what that does is it suspends the oil in the soap and there's just enough lye left to absorb it and it's called super fatting so that just adds a little bit of extra moisture to your soap. And that makes it super rich lathery yes. soap. And so I like to use my super fat oil to dilute my oxide so I just kind of get two things done in one step. But this is the oxide and this is an ultramarine violet and this is three ounces, and that's fluid ounces of um, olive oil, and it weighs about three ounces, but it's very important that you weigh all your ingredients. You cannot measure your ingredients, you have to weigh them. So make sure that you have a really good scale. On your colorant, it's not quite as important because you're going for the color, mm -hmm. what you like, and that's, and I'm gonna use about half a teaspoon to three ounces of olive oil. And this is gonna go in our lavender soap. Mm -hmm. And this has to set, so you want to do this before you do anything else. You just want it to be completely dissolved. And there's always going to be a few specks when you work so with this. So how long should that set? I, I should have done this a little bit sooner. I like for it to set for at least 15 to 20 okay. minutes. But we're going to rush things along today, and that's fine too. It might have a few more specks than normal. But, but that'll that's just be cute. No big deal. In the soap. But I do also want to mention a few things about safety too. Right now we haven't really uh, touched on safety too much, but it is important when you measure out lye to uh, wear goggles and a face mask. Okay. So that's about good. We're a little uh, better here because we're outside in the open air. But if you're doing this in an enclosed room, it's doubly important to double up on your safety measures. Yes, and I would never suggest doing it in your kitchen. I know a lot of people do. Yeah. And I just can't. So <laughs> I can't suggest doing that. I have a room dedicated just for soap making in my house. Yeah. And uh, that's really handy. I know people don't always have that, um, you know, available to them, but... That extra space is nice. But you can see it's it's pretty well dissolved. Um, there's we'll a few it, we'll, specks. We'll let it sit a little while longer. So and that, the other one's going to be what color? Um, the other one we decided to do green, and that's the cold process. There's a little green sweat bee on there. <laughs> He's going to help out. I'm going to leave him alone. So we should. We'll just go ahead and do that one. We can let that set. Right, and it's about can half you, a teaspoon. Can also. you let it sit too long? No. Okay. The wind's going to play havoc with. So it. it's a it's a good idea to. Um, do this well in advance of your soap making. So we're, we're just going to let this sit a little while and uh, okay. then we'll continue this later. This is our oil that we've had melted down before and we want it to be between 110 and 105 degrees. And you also want your lye to be about the same temperature. And um, in order to equal it out, I always put ice in my water when I mix my lye solution up. That way it cools off faster and you don't have such a reaction right off the bat. So, okay, so when you put the lye in the water, that there was a that that was a dangerous. That's the, uh, the part worst, to do. Right. Okay, so you we need gloves. You need your goggles for that, mm -hmm. and uh, you and need to put ice in the water before you add your lye. Right, to, and you right? definitely do not want to touch this. Once the solution is made, mm -hmm. it's a liquid. You don't want to spill it on you. You don't want to get it in your eyes for sure mm -hmm. or your your skin. When you first mix it together, there's always the um, danger of it coming up or getting too hot too fast. And so it, it boils. It will. Up. It, it can. will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the different there's different kinds of lye. You know, this is sodium hydroxide, and that's what's used in making solid soap. And um, so potassium hydroxide is what is used in making soft soap. Oh, okay, good to so. know. This is the sodium hydroxide, and I just mix it up in my bucket. You want to always use plastic or stainless steel. You never want to use aluminum because the lye will eat right through it. Mm -hmm. 
that would be good. No. So this is my stick blender. And I just put my stick blender so in, in here. In here you have just my melted oils. And this is my lye solution. And when you pour your lye solution in, you want it to go in about the size of a number two pencil. And you just want to hit that blender. Just kind of pulse it a little bit. Yep. And you don't want to pour it in too fast. Sometimes you get in a hurry and want to do it too fast. But... It's nice and easy. And the wheel. And you'll, stir, you'll continue to stir this. Right now, I can see it looks kind of grainy on the top. You're going to continue to stir until that looks silky on the top, and you know you're getting close to trace. And when I say trace, I mean that it's the consistency of what pudding may be, and it will actually set on top of itself when you pull your mixer out and go like this. You'll see it'll leave um, a pile. Yeah, on the just top. like pudding. Sure. Yeah. But they call it trace. So you just want to continue to do this. And the reason I turn it off is because you can get a false trace sometimes, and that is not good. If you get a false trace and pour it too soon, then your soap will blow up. And what I mean when I say that is it goes through its saponification process and its gel phase in the box without being agitated, and that's not good because Aww. it looks like alien brains on top. <laughs> and if that ever happens, you'll know you've done something if wrong. alien brains instead of soap, you might as well melt it down and start over. That's right, and then it's called milk soap. <laughs> but either way, it, you, can, you can always fix it. That's the great thing about soap. It's very, very forgiving. Okay. Well, we're getting pretty close to trace right now, and I'm just gonna measure out my um, lavender oil and these are one ounce measuring cups. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that down right now. I wanna make sure that this is a real trace and not a fake one, so I'm just gonna stir it for a minute. That's that. Go back to stirring. You cannot leave this set very long when you do something like that because it'll get really thick. You wanna keep it's not it quite to a good trace yet. But when it's really close is when you want to add your color. Make sure you stir it up to get all, because the oxides will sink to the bottom of your cup. You want to make sure that that's stirred really well. And you just pour it in. Some people will pour it in really slow. I just dump it right in since I have my mixer right here. And that's also the oil that will super fat the soap. You can see the color, it looks so good. And sometimes your color will get darker as it cures. And it does have to cure for at least six weeks because um, anything before that, it's known as hot soap. And hot soap um, will have a tendency to dry your skin out. So, you want to make sure that it's cured completely for at least six weeks okay. before you use it. I've added another teaspoon of the oxide along with one ounce of castor oil and just a touch of olive oil to get it uh, to dissolve. And now I'm going to go ahead and pour that in. It just wasn't purple enough for me. Sometimes you just have to trial and error. Yeah. Especially when you're using new colors. and The oxides, they have a mind of their own. And that's okay because it's um, something I'm willing to deal with as long as it's the natural color because they are so awesome when you get it right. <laughs> oh, that's what you put in there. Yeah, that'll look great. And it will get a little bit darker as it cures. Okay. okay, so we have it all mixed up. The purple oxide is in there, and we're getting ready to add the essential oil. Add your essential oil and just stir it in once your color is in, and you've come to a full trace. I need one more ounce of the um, lavender. lavender. These little cups are exactly an ounce, aren't they just so handy? Just pour it in? Just pour it right in. So that's two ounces of the lavender essential oil. And it ended up being like a teaspoon of the oxide? Probably a teaspoon and a half. A teaspoon and a half. And how many bars of soap will this make, Shana? 32. That's quite a big batch. 
Well, depending on how uh, big you cut your bars, uh -huh. I like to cut around a four ounce bar. That makes a really good size bar. Okay, we're ready to pour. Now this is gonna go in here at the long In here, and I've it. already got oh, my spray. I see you've already got your spray in there and everything, excellent. So you just want to pour it nice and gently. You don't want it to splash up on you, and you don't want um, air bubbles. Because this is what we call hot, right? Right now, and it will burn you still. Yes. And it will remain hot until it's cured. And with these um, inserts in the in the uh, mold, your plastic insert, mm -hmm. it's going to weep out of the corners just a little bit, and that's okay. I it's not going to go far, and it's really not enough to um, concern yourself with. So if it weeps out of the corners a little bit, it's okay. It's to be expected. And what are you doing now? Why are you doing that? Um, I'm doing this to get the air bubbles out. I can see a few air bubbles in there, just like you do an angel Come down cake. with the spatula. And it's like you're trying to push the air bubbles to the top, not necessarily stir the soap. And once you feel like you've gotten quite a few out, then comes the fun part. You smack it on the table. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty good. Now comes the fun part. You just want to take your fresh lavender and put oh it right God. on the top. Smell that lavender. And you're going to use more than what you need because you want to be able to push it down in there and get all of it even. So you might have a few fall off after you've done this, but you need as much on there as you can and you just want to take your hands and make sure you wear gloves and you just pat it and you can feel them actually sinking down into the soap. Will they retain their color? Yes, they will retain their color and their smell and you want to push it over to the edge really good. And a little um, hint on cutting lavender soap, you always want to cut from the bottom up. Uh -huh. Because if you cut down this way, you'll get streaks on the side of your soap from the lavender oh, pulling down the, through it. From the lavender so you just, and then you turn your box and pat this side. Just like a little baby. Just mm -hmm. kinda... You're burping it. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that Shauna really has an emotional investment in her soap. <laughs> Like I've said before, that's one of the things that makes her a terrific soap maker is she really puts her heart into it. It isn't just a recipe, you know. Now, I believe you told us this needs to cure four to six weeks. Uh, yes. Now, do we have to wait until then to cut it? No. Okay. What you will do from this point, after you set this um, somewhere cool, you don't want it to get too hot, but somewhere cool like in the garage or, mm -hmm. you know, on the basement floor and you want to cover it up with a piece of cardboard and let it set for 24 hours. And at that 24 hour point, you can kind of determine whether it's going to be soft enough or hard enough to cut. Okay. And usually it is. I've always cut my soap at 24, 24 hours. hours. And then after your soap's cured, you just cut it into different sizes. And the fun part is wrapping it in all different ways. Um, me and Nana like to scrapbook. <laughs> And so I've incorporated scrapbooking into my soap wrapping process and that's always fun to get together and have people come over and help you wrap it because there's so many different ways oh, of doing there's it. Just, every one is unique. It has buttons and stamps and yarn and beads and uh, just anything that you want to put, anything you use mm -hmm. in scrapbooking or crafting, mm -hmm. you can put on the steampunk mm -hmm. soap. Isn't it adorable? And I like to recycle things. I've even recycled old VCR parts. <laughs> Put on that there. is fun. That is so fun. Radios, old radios. Oh, yeah. just anything. <laughs> just anything you can find that's a little, you know, trinkety or different. Your husband might think it's junk, but it's steampunk. Yeah. <laughs>